Welcome to Organized-ish. My name is Leela and I used to be a professional organizer. Now I'm a full-time blogger and one of the biggest events that I host every single year is the 28 Day Declutter Challenge. This challenge happens on my blog and on all of my social media accounts every year. And basically what we do is every single day for 28 days, we declutter one small area in the house. So we're not going through like a whole room or anything. It's just one little space. This challenge usually takes about 15 minutes a day or less, depending on how much time you have. You can totally put in five minutes or 30 or whatever you want to do. Now, last year I filmed all of the declutter challenge and I didn't have a YouTube channel at the time, but I saved them because I knew one day I would. And so today I have compiled all of the videos from the last declutter challenge and they are all ready to go for you. You can download the full list of the declutter challenge in the description and then watch these videos to get all of the inspiration for everything that you can do over the next month. You're also going to see that my house looks pretty different because we've been renovating for the last three years. And so a lot of the things you're going to see are not how my house looks now. So it's going to be really fun for us both to take a walk down memory lane and see how things have changed and how my organizing style has changed too. Either way, everything in these videos is exactly the same way that I would do it today and I really hope that you enjoy all these videos being put together into one so you can get all of your organizing and decluttering inspo. Now let's get to the challenge. Day one of the declutter challenge is all about the nightstand. You probably use this every single day so this is a good place to start. First off, all you're gonna do is empty everything out. Take out anything you don't need, like these scrunchies because I no longer have hair, and you can rearrange things so they fit better. After you've taken out a few things like the scrunchies, now I have extra room that I can fit my eye mask in the organizer instead of in a separate one. I like to leave an open place so I can drop my glasses at night. Go ahead and remove things you don't need, like books and magazines you've already read and journals from last year, but the things that you do want to keep, put them back in the drawer for now. Now that the drawers are decluttered, you can add back in the things that you want to have in there that you didn't have before, like my journaling pens and my headphones, and I even left a space in the top for the next book that I read. Now all I have to do is either store, relocate, recycle, or return anything that didn't belong in the nightstand, and I'm done! Today we're decluttering DVDs, CDs, and video games. Make a quick run through and find any cases that are missing sleeves or discs, or you know your kids have outgrown and you're never gonna watch again. And while you're at it, you can recycle the advertisements inside. You can straighten up power cord clutter with this easy hack. Just slide a toilet paper roll right over the bunched up cords and write what it goes to. So whether you did a full on purge or just clean things up, your next movie night's gonna be a lot less stressful. It's day three and we're decluttering gift wrap. It's totally fine to reuse gift bags as long as the tag is easily removable, but if the tag is a sticker, it's probably time to recycle the bag. Remember, you don't have to stash a ton of gift wrap supplies. Try to keep a generic all occasion collection that fits in just one container. It's day four and we're decluttering all of our makeup and bath products. You're gonna need a big trash can. Today you're gonna go through all of your beauty products and get rid of anything you don't need, like those free samples you never opened and the makeup you never wore. Open everything up and you're gonna find some things that are dried out too. This lipstick is almost empty and why is there cat medicine in here? I can also say goodbye to these scrunchies and a Target receipt. Don't forget to throw out empty cans and old clumpy nail polish. And if you've had your hair dryer for more than a year and you still have this thing in the plastic, trash it. You can also save space by getting rid of extra packaging. I know you feel like you need to organize now that you've cleaned everything up, but please don't do that. Today is just about decluttering and freeing up some space in your bathroom. You might not need as much storage space as you think. For day five, we're tackling the refrigerator doors. When you find something that's still in date and you wanna keep it, put it in one pile. If it's expired or you just didn't like it, put it in a different pile. Go through them all one by one until you've completely emptied the door. And while it's empty, go ahead and give the shelves a quick wipe down. Make note of anything you need to restock on your grocery list, and then you can go ahead and start filling back up the door. You can organize the door however you want, or you can just throw it all in there. If you wanna keep going, you can clean out the rest of the fridge too.
It's day six and today we're working on our cleaning supplies. I keep most of mine in a utility closet in our kitchen and it was kind of a disaster so I decided to clean up the whole thing. Some people like to store their cleaning supplies all in one place and others like to keep them in each room. Both of those are fine and my biggest suggestion is just to pick a lane and stick with it. Safely dispose of any cleaners you don't use and combine duplicates to save space. It's day seven and we're decluttering jewelry and accessories. Look around the house for loose pieces of jewelry and gather them all together into one place. Add anything you don't wear that's in good condition to the donation bin and put anything that's damaged straight in the trash. If you're throwing out earrings, hang on to a few sets of backs in case you lose some. Next, go through accessories like handbags, belts, and winter wear. Make it a priority to stop by the donation center this week. For day eight, we're decluttering under the kitchen sink. First off, take everything out from underneath. Give it a quick cleaning and line the bottom to protect it from spills. And as you're purging all the things that don't belong under there, consider adding some extra containers to make the organization a little more manageable. I prefer stackable lidded containers and those with drawers for under the sink. Try to cut down what you store under there to a minimum so you don't have a mess like this again. It's day nine and we're decluttering household linens. Get rid of old bed sheets, bath towels, hand towels, and duvet covers, as well as throw blankets, table linens, and cloth napkins. Your local animal shelter would love these donations, so please don't throw them away. Once you've finished purging, neatly refold your linens and store them by category for easy access. For day 10, we're decluttering board games and puzzles. So go through your collection and get rid of anything that's broken, damaged, missing pieces, or you just don't play anymore. My biggest tip to keep up with this is to put a post-it note on the inside of the lid and write the date of the last time you played. And a great place to donate used board games and puzzles is your local senior center or nursing home. It's day 11 and your task is to declutter two kitchen drawers. Start by removing anything that doesn't belong in the drawers. I've got all kinds of random things where my napkins go. There's also things in this drawer that actually go somewhere else in the kitchen. They just somehow ended up here. Don't worry too much about reorganizing. For now, you're just taking out things that don't belong. Once you've gathered up the things that don't go in the drawer, either put them away where they go or trash them. I'm moving on to my second drawer and I'm finding all kinds of trash and Actually, there's some things in here that I have a ton of, like five spatulas and five tongs. Purge your least favorite duplicates and try to free up some space inside the drawer. This is gonna make cooking tonight so much easier. For day 12, we're decluttering coats and winter wear. Whether you have a dedicated coat closet or you just keep things with the rest of your clothes, go through and find anything that doesn't fit or you no longer wear. Clean out the pockets and you might find something good inside. Heavier jackets need a stronger hanger, so if you have some that are on thin hangers, swap them out for something weightier. And zip or button up all of your coats to keep them from sliding off. Donate unneeded items to a local homeless shelter or your kid's school, and don't forget about accessories too. We're on day 13 of the declutter challenge and today we're tackling all of our Tupperware and lunch prep items. Whether you have a lot or just a little, go through everything you have and take out anything you don't need, anything that's missing its mate, or anything that's broken or damaged. I like to keep my zip top bags in with the Tupperware for lunch packing, and cutting the flaps off makes it easier to access. I love this lid organizer, but you don't have to have something like this. You can stack the lids right beside the containers. If you find lidless containers, you can actually repurpose them as drawer organizers. And go ahead and recycle mateless lids. It's day 14 and we're halfway through. Today we're knocking out all of our office supplies. Whether you have a desk or a cabinet, check and make sure everything is still in working condition and purge an overflow of duplicates. Throw away any trash you find, file loose paperwork you need to keep, and either pack away or recycle used up notebooks. Don't forget to test all of your dry erase markers too. Make note of any storage solutions you might need and plan on picking those up this week. Day 15 is my favorite because we're decluttering craft supplies. Make a quick run through of your stash and get rid of anything that you don't need, you've had for a long time, or you just don't think you'll ever use. I've had this paper since my son was born and he's 14. 
and you can go ahead and get rid of those machine boxes too. You're not going to need them. Downsize embellishments and your specialty hobby supplies and put away anything that's out of place. If you end up with a lot of purge craft supplies, I highly recommend hosting a craft swap party to share with friends. For day 16, we're decluttering all of our kitchen baking supplies. Take everything out of the cabinet and try not to spill the salt everywhere like I just did. Our shelves are really old and flaking, so I went ahead and made a new shelf out of plywood and covered it with shelf liner since we keep oils in there. While I was going through everything, I found four empty jars and a whole bunch of things that belong in the pantry, not in this cabinet at all. And check the dates because this coconut oil expired last year. And hey, there's all that salt that I spilled. After you've purged and cleaned up your mess, you can go ahead and start start filling back up the cabinet. I love using a Lazy Susan because it makes things really easy to find. I cleared out so much that I have a full empty shelf now. A lot of things were old, belonged in the pantry, or just needed to be recycled. Now that I have that extra shelf in the cabinet, I ordered a rack to put all my spices in because I don't like keeping them this low. I'll go through all these when the rack arrives. For day 17, we're decluttering our dresser drawers. Go through every single drawer and take out anything that's damaged, doesn't fit, or you just don't want to wear anymore. If it's still in good condition, you can add it to your donation box. If you've got extra space in your drawers, you can actually save some space from your hangers by folding some of your t-shirts. Alternatively, if your drawers are jam-packed, you can take some things out and put them on hanging rods instead. Try to get used to using the file fold method because it makes it so much easier to find what you need in your drawers and it makes them look neat and tidy too. Once you're done, put your donation box in the trunk so you don't forget about it. It's day 18 and we're decluttering the laundry room. Your goal today is to go through everything in your laundry room and get rid of anything that's empty or you don't use anymore. If you keep your supplies directly on top of the washing machine, put down a shelf liner and tray so things don't move around. Don't forget to empty out the trash can that you keep your lint in too. I already went through all of these bins when we did the linens, so I can skip right ahead to the missing sock basket. My favorite hack is to put an expiration date on mateless socks, that way they don't pile up. And in case you haven't done this in a while, go ahead and clean out your dryer lint trap too. Now your laundry room is clean and tidy. Day 19 is an easy day. We're decluttering our coffee table and end tables. Start by removing anything that doesn't belong, and if you've got things that go in different rooms, stack them in categories so it makes it easier to put away. Be honest with yourself and intentional about what belongs here. This little piece of trash does not go here. These magazines that I haven't read yet can stay, but this Christmas catalog has got to go. Speaking of magazines, I get holding on to them because I keep quite a few, but it's good to go through them every few months. We made it to day 20 and today we're decluttering pet stuff. Go through all of your pet's belongings like clothes, leashes, extra linens, toys, grooming supplies, everything. Get rid of anything that's damaged or your pet just no longer needs. If you seem to end up with a whole bunch of pet toys, you can downsize the collection. Don't forget to go through all of the medicines, treats, and food also. These things can expire and a lot of them end up getting pushed to the back and never even get used. For day 21, we're decluttering the junk drawer. I know you've probably been dreading this, but it's really not that bad. All you're gonna do is go through everything inside the drawer and take it all out. Then decide what gets to go back in and what doesn't. This is the one time in the declutter challenge that I actually recommend adding new organizers and bins to keep the junk drawer from being, well, a junk drawer. Think of it more as a home and office supply station. It's day 22 and today we're decluttering a catch-all bin. We all seem to have some kind of catch-all bin stuffed somewhere hidden in our house and today is the day that we're going to empty it out, throw out any trash, and put away things that don't belong in it. You might even find that your catch-all bin is completely empty after you do this process and that's okay, it's probably going to get filled up again eventually anyway. That's what happened with the bottom basket here. I had enough space for magazines, but there's also enough room for doc. Once you've removed things from your catch-all bin that doesn't belong, throw away any trash you find and move things to their permanent homes, like these binder kits that go in my office and this upcoming project that I haven't started. <music> 
on day 23, and today we're tackling all of the bookshelves in the house. Don't worry, you don't have to get rid of any books if you don't want to. Go through every bookshelf in every room and remove anything that doesn't belong, and try to downsize on the displays just a little bit so there's some breathing room and space in between your collectibles and books. One way to instantly make your bookshelves look neater is stacking some books and standing others. This makes the bookshelf look more like intentional decor and less like stand-in storage. If you can't stand to see clutter but still need to keep things on open shelves, you can stash your stuff in thick baskets and lidded boxes. This also makes it really easy to dust later. For day 24, we're decluttering the pantry. I know you've seen on TV where they suggest that you take everything out of the pantry, and usually if you're reorganizing, that's a great idea. But today, all I want you to do is go through the pantry and take out anything that you don't need, anything that's expired, anything that's damaged, and anything that doesn't belong in there. Doing a full-on pantry organization project can sometimes take you all day long, so today, just focus on decluttering and clearing things out. That way, when you're ready to organize, you know exactly exactly how much space you need, exactly how many containers you need to buy, and you have a better feel for how much you normally keep inside. For day 25, we're decluttering the cup cabinet. If you're like me, you've got an overabundance of mugs, plastic cups, and then some random things in the cup cabinet that you don't even use. Go through the cabinet, empty out anything that doesn't belong, and try to downsize to free up some space. If you've got sippy cups in your cabinet and all your kids are grown, it's time to let those go. Also, make note of any basic drinkware you need to purchase. Day 26 is an easy one. Today we're decluttering all of our excess home decor that we no longer want, need, or goes with our decorating style. Take a stroll through your house and look through all of the closets, cabinets, and containers that you store excess home decor in. Downsize things like pillows, knickknacks, and faux plants that are collecting dust instead of on display. You can even sell them for a little extra cash. We're on day 27 and we're decluttering the hanging clothes in our closet. We've already done the dresser, so all that's left is the clothes that are on the hangers. You know the drill, anything you don't need, anything you don't like, anything that's damaged or has a huge stain, it's time to say goodbye. And if you end up getting rid of a lot, now's a great time to do some rearranging. For day 28, your challenge is to declutter your phone photos. Now I didn't film this one because I didn't want to show all of my photos, but let me tell you, I have a lot of photos and videos on my phone. So basically what you're going to do is just set a timer for a certain amount of time and just scroll through your phone, look for duplicates, look in that screenshots folder because you know how you screenshot all these random things and then you forget to delete them. That's a good place to start. Now there's no way you're going to be able to get through all of your photos and videos unless you don't have many on your phone, but if you're like me and you've got a ton, don't feel like there's a finish line. It's really just a little goes a long way with this. Even if you just get rid of some, it's a step forward and it gets you in the habit of going through your phone photos and deleting them whenever you have time. One of my favorite ways to do this is if I'm sitting in a waiting room waiting for an appointment, I'll go through my phone and look for duplicates then. It only takes like five minutes, but I feel like I accomplished a lot even though I didn't get rid of too many things at once. If you don't want to do phone photos or if you just don't have a lot to go through, you can use today as just a catch-up day to pick any category in your house that needs decluttering, set that timer for 15 minutes, and just power through it. The whole point of day 28 is to finish strong and to feel good about what you've done over the last month. And speaking of last month, let's take a quick look back at all the spaces we were able to declutter. 